thank you everyone to joining this session. I trust you've had uh, enjoying the event so far, full of very thought provoking topics. I am David Castro Gavino, Global VP of Data at HelloFresh. And today I wanted to, to share HelloFresh's journey to distributed data mesh. However, before we dive into it, let me briefly introduce you to HelloFresh. So HelloFresh is one of the most popular meal kits in the world with uh, over 280 million meals delivered and over 7 million active customers. Our mission is to change the way people eat forever. And we achieve it by providing every household with amazing homemade meals, removing the hassle. Everything required is carefully planned, sourced and delivered to your front door. Our innovative supply chain focuses on reducing food waste, carbon emissions, optimize packaging and promote local ingredient sourcing. Um, however, HelloFresh is far more than just a meal kit of a provider. We have a growing diverse offering with brands such as Green Chef, Every Plate and Factor, targeting a variety of customer needs and wants. Our vision is to be the world's leading fully integrated food solutions group. And data, without doubt, is a crucial journey as, as part of this ambition. So if you want to learn a bit more about us, um, please reach out to us, to me, uh, connect through LinkedIn or visit our career page. We have a number of very exciting roles across, across several geographies. So as I mentioned earlier, I wanted to take you through the journey that HelloFresh is taking towards distributed data mesh. By no means we are there, but we are going, we're doing a significant strive in that journey. And firstly, I want, let's dive into the, the why. This is the questions I get asked most of the time. And for that, we need to do a bit of understanding or our overview of the different data architectures we have had over the years. Please don't panic. This is not a, an intention to provide a lecture, a history class, but this is something that I like to do to set the level um, when taking senior stakeholders through the, through the thinking. So over the years, we have seen a number of architect architectures uh, as data volumes and data times grew from data warehouses, data lakes, data lake houses, and most recently, data mesh. Now I want to dive briefly into the first initial three times. Here we have a high level representation of a data warehouse and a data lake. In a data warehouse, the heterogeneous sources are ingested into a staging area and the data is modeled, normalized and access accessible in a singular enterprise uh, data warehouse. It is then followed by a domain specific data match where the data is further denormalized or aggregated based on the use case. On the other side, we have the data lake, the, 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 where, which acts as a storage layer, in some cases acting as a massive dumping ground of a myriad of different data sources. We then enrich the data with technical and business metadata, along with some standardization. And finally, enterprise-wide business rules are applied for consumption by different domains. The reality is that the data is not good enough at times for direct consumption, hence the need to add data warehouse on top for further normalization. With the increase of cloud and uh, columnar st uh, store like Snowflake and BigQuery, et cetera, this gives the race to the data lake houses. Uh, a data lake house still relies on a raw layer where the data is copied one from one to one from the source in the original form, but the rest of the two layers of the data uh, data lake are decomposed into constructs similar to the data warehouse. It also provides further flexibility by allowing for querying semi-structured data native uh, through SQL, which would have an otherwise require reliance on ETL, hence the most public, uh, popular pro processing paradigm of a lake house is usually SQL versus ETL. In the EDW becomes an optional entity and the lighthouse depending on the use cases and the technology use. As promised, end of lecture, but for me it was important to understand them so we can set the and understanding what the challenges are. So these architectures are not addressing some key issues. Start with, we miss the ability to scale due to the centralization of the data platform, which leads to data platform teams becoming the bottleneck as data producers and consumers skills, scales, which in turn impacts overall delivery speed of new features or teams. 
and it does not allow the scale of the environment which the increase of data produces and consumers linearly. And then if we try to increase the capacity of the platform, this unfortunately what we're doing is just kicking it down the line rather than actually fixing the issue. We then have siloed data, siloed teams with hyper-specialized teams, lack of shared domain knowledge, which then leads to the lack of quality and effectiveness. And then we miss feedback cycles. Data means gather or capture data, derive insights from data, create decisions based on data, measure how these decisions have impacted the real world, learn from the real world and start again. In these architectures, the measurements of impact in real world is not being fed back into the system and models, at, or at least in a seamless way. So the flow goes from source to consumer, not consumer to source. And finally, the complexity of the environment. There is no domain boundaries for the data, which in turn leads to big monolithic platforms, which becomes common sense in terms of complexity, size, and infrastructure. Okay, however, you want to, let's, let's take it with an example. So, and I want to take you through the journey and what better base to explain it through the next exercise of a recipe. So this recipe is the Hello Fresh Tech ecosystem, and it takes about nine years to cook, but hey, it is gluten-free. So, at the beginning, in 2011, when HelloFresh first started as our company, we inherited an application from our, share, from our shareholder, defining this diagram as operational plane, which was tailored for e-commerce and adapted for our subscription model. It had a back-end component called ODS Back and a front-end component called ODS Front. Well, I must confess, in reality, they have more meaningful names, Bob and Alice. Who am I to argue? But I have to admit that it took me a few days when I realized that Bob and Alex were actually not people. Moving to one side, together, these two systems did everything we needed to run our business. A couple of years later, we decided it would be a good idea to have not just a website, but also a, a mobile app. So some of our engineers built a new application, which we gave a, a fancy name, APV2. Yeah, yeah, no more people names. It was connected to the same database and had a lot of the same functionality. So together, we talked about operational plane and API v um, 2 with the term of the monolith. As time went on, I guess some of our engineering leads read a blog post where they heard that it was a good idea to have microservice architecture. So we started doing that in both the front end and the back end. So our front end is built a bunch of fragments and particles, and then the back end is started extracting some stuff out of the operation plane and building dedicated services for them. Either. Over time, we better be crazy. So now there's a lot of services and a lot of fragments. But in the middle, we do still have the monolith that goes, that does a lot of important stuff. Let me just remind you that this is only describing the operational layer. If I add our science, our analytical and reporting layer, you start seeing the limitations and challenges that these architectures carry. And let me just remind you, it basically impacted our abilities to scale. We had siloed data, siloed teams, and there was no true feedback loops, not to mention the complexity of the environment. So how do we move forward? Here is what we need to break the monolith and move to a distributed data ownership. However, this is not about technology transformation alone, but a data culture transformation that impacts the entire business. This is why we define a data strategy that leverages three key guiding principles. We must treat data as a precious asset. We must drive data product thinking, and we have to embrace domain-driven architecture. Let me briefly dive into each one of them. So, all we know, data is a valuable asset, and this is the principle has the objective for elevating the appreciation of data as an asset, a direct impact and direction of the data culture of the organization, by ensuring that we have the right understanding of the roles that everyone plays from data producer to data consumer. In my, in my experience, the lack of understanding is the singular blocker of adoption of our transformation. Here, having a well-defined literacy program is crucial. At HelloFresh, for example, we're looking at ways of, to innovate from engaging the organization on implementation of the program to gamifying the experience itself. 
Then we have dry, uh, dry uh, product thinking, which is, in my belief, is a crucial principle to succeed in the distribution of our data ownership. Let me leverage this statement further. Product thinking is crucial to ensure that we are treating and managing the data asset in the distributed domains with the same rigor and care as the products these domains create. The domain's data will not only be consumed by the domain itself, but most importantly, it needs to be easily accessible to other domains that will be downstream consumers. Ensuring that dependencies are clearly are clear defined, so any changes are communicated like new, any new product development. But what do I mean when I talk about data as a product? You see, I hear however, that data must be discoverable. It must have a register in the data catalog, owners, source, lineage, schema. It must be addressable. It, 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 it must be easy to use with a unique address following standard, standard naming conventions. Trustworthy, it must have acceptable SLOs and SLAs, and let's not forget quality standards. Self-describing, it must be easily understood with clear definition and schemas. Interoperable, which is in, many, in, in essence governed that, so it can be used effectively across the organization uh, from data times, formats. And let's not forget secure. A data asset must follow data, BI, and security policies. Finally, we have to embrace domain-driven architecture. As I described earlier, we found ourselves managing a large centralized monolithic and domain agnostic environment via central team, a team that is unfortunately removed from the domain needs and at times will make the wrong assumptions, create barriers of discontent. Again, reinforcing the challenges I mentioned earlier. We then find ourselves with domains that need faster response, building their own data silos, adding technical debt and additional data management overhead. I'm not suggesting by no means that we move to a silo domain or oriented architecture, but to a distributed domain uh, driven architecture that consumes a self service platform. This is where data mesh plays a key role. I would recommend anyone wanting to dig deeper into this to read a blog from Sam Abihani, uh, with whom Professor Ari Finder introduced the data mesh concept. But in essence, we have two models. In a pure data mesh, each domain owns its own operational analytical plane. In the operational plane, almost all the sources are, are, are replaced by a service mesh and there are no monolithic data store available apart from the few reference data. On the analytical plane, the data is transformed into polygons, polygon data products, which are reside in different storage technologies based on the use case. The central data hub acts as a virtualization layer as intended to support the myriad of activities from data discovery, data access, data control, tagging based on ownership to cross polygon joins. The scale and velocity of the data is generally quite substantial and the organization data maturity tends to be quite advanced, but not recommended for all organizations. We then have the hybrid mesh, the architecture that we here at HelloFresh are working towards. This hybrid mesh allows for autonomy amongst individual domains by the fact that each domain takes care of ingestion on its own data sources and their own the and they own their own data lake houses. The sources are predominantly microservices with some monolith and batch sources. And these sources are ingested into the raw layer, which is only logical centrally. The respective domains physically own their buckets based on guidelines set at the organization level. Each of the lake houses between domains are linked through conformed dimensions, which are generally bridge structures. Data governance and data security are achieved through the SQL capability of the lake house itself in combination with the data catalog technology. So, let me take you through what we have done so far at HelloFresh. Firstly, we have established a global central data management and governance functions that establishes processes and policies which data is managed, i.e. acquire, govern, validate, store, protected, and processed. And the whole point is to satisfy the needs of HelloFresh. We then implemented a comprehensive data literacy, pro uh, data literacy program for the organization, making the domains part of the process, and most recently, gaming the, the, the learning by promoting the earning of data budgets. 
We conducted a deep dive to define, identify, and distribute data ownership across uh, all data assets. We introduced the data product manager role in the data consuming functions to help manage the data ownership from those domains. We introduced inform informatica data catalog for the business users, and we enforce AWS Glue as the central mesh catalog. And finally, we deliver a core platform tooling in the form of ingestion as a service so producers can ingest data easily. From an architecture perspective, like having this diagram, we are in the midst of a platform upgrade. Like everyone, we have legacy technology, and in the end, it's an interim investment in technical debt. However, the objective is to move away from our operational monolith and as we are modernize our pipelines from batch to streaming. Our end goal is to have a platform where each individual domain, uh, uh, domain teams holds and governs their own data um, and also various data products of different scales. A centralized data hub would be used to abstract the complexity of this hybrid mesh and would have the capability of data discovery, data cataloging, lineage, and governance. However, the journey is never easy. Otherwise, we don't have fun, do we? Let me share some of the key challenges we had to overcome. First, never underestimate the data five comes. It's in the organization, team siloed teams holding their own data and limiting access is crucial to bring everyone with you and on board. Data modeling, ensuring that domains can assure interoperability between models. One has to be careful that individual data product owns by different domains, teams, although might follow the same data modeling approach, establishing relationship between data sets might prove difficult and sometimes impossible. Never underestimate the reorganization challenges and how it impacts the team, more so in the recent COVID norm. Communications is key. Finally, fun, uh, balancing technical debt versus greenfield. We don't have the luxury to stop everything and strategically investing in technical debt to buy time. As long as you know it has a temporary uh, phase, it's better than rushing a transformation. So what were our learnings? One, data culture is key, invest in data literacy. Two, involve the right stakeholders, taking everyone through the journey, not cutting corners. Technical is not always bad. Decentralize as much as possible, but don't run before you can crawl. Find the right metrics to track. And finally, data ownership to be defined, to define lineage, i.e. find out who is owning the data for what. Final reminder, this is not about technology transformation alone, but a culture transformation that impacts the entire business.